Hey -o. Oh my god, what a busy day, huh? Let me clip this stupid thing. So we're on this shirt. Um Wanna know if you know exactly what you're missing. Has anybody ever tried switching it up between 12-bit uh, and 14-bit RAW files? Um, do you know exactly what you're missing by shooting in 12-bit versus 14-bit? Not talking about compressed or uncompressed, but you're missing a lot. Um, say you've got you know a really nice expensive lens, a Zeiss, Planar, or some expensive Nikkor lens. You know you got yourself an expensive DSLR. You're like, well, the files are too big, you know, I don't want to shoot in 14-bit RAW, you know, shoot in 12-bit. Buffer speed's faster, the files are too big. Every excuse other than at the very uh, acceptable, you know, shooting sports for uh, better buffer speeds, there's no reasonable um, decision that you can give or premise for shooting in 12-bit uh, RAW instead of 14-bit. I mean, have you uh, seen like the shadow detail difference between like 14-bit uh, shadows and 12-bit uh, shadows? Oh, crap versus uh, distinguishable lines. What do you think that does in micro contrast? It is like, you know, it's ridiculous. It's like going to a, a nice movie you've been waiting months to come out and when you get to the theater you turn you take your eyeglasses off and you know really I mean is that what you want to do I mean of course I've already made the video about you know JPEGs of the devil which of course they are um, and that's a point for you know another discussion additional here at the end of this little video but why are you shooting in 12-bit raw I mean do you have a logical premise for it no, I mean, do you know what's being lost? You've got that presumably expensive lens and that nice DSLR camera. You're shooting landscapes and portraiture. You know, you're you're shooting, you know, street stuff. Shoot in 14-bit RAW. Um, additionally, so on uh, JPEGs, uh, I you know, if somebody doesn't like editing files, it's still not understandable. But the notion that you know your camera every DSLR camera is shooting uh, raw files anyway from the sensor your camera hates JPEGs your camera if you want to eventually convert it to a JPEG to print it out instead of like a TIFF or something you know do that in your uh, in your computer your camera doesn't matter how expensive your camera is it's not a good JPEG converter and uh, if you start shooting in JPEG, you are, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's like uh, having a sex with somebody with venereal disease and deciding not to use a condom or something. I mean, it's ridiculous. There's no logical... You know, like in JPEG, for example, you got 256 brightness levels versus 16,380-some brightness levels in 14-bit RAW. Let's see, 256 versus 16,000. I don't know. I bought this expensive DSLR. I think I'm going to put uh, files JPEG. Fine. No. There are like a thousand reasons not to shoot JPEG. And there's like two reasons to shoot JPEG. And those two reasons are, are lame. Um, anybody that tells you that, uh, well, the files are too big on RAW. Well, hard drives are a dime a dozen. So that's not an excuse. If it's an excuse that you don't know how to use uh, Lightroom... You know, who cares? You'll learn it later. Still shooting JP. I mean, still shooting raw. I mean, who cares if you don't know and you're starting out? Shoot it in raw anyway. That way, you've got the chance with that digital negative file to change it later to actually process it without. You know, every time you open up a JPEG and do anything to it, it's a lossy format. It uh, it's like making a copy of a copy of a copy. You you don't want to mess with that stuff with raw. You don't have that issue. Um. You know, your camera is capturing everything in RAW anyway. Your decision to shoot in JPEG is just cutting short the potential of your camera. Every camera is shooting in RAW anyway. Why would you choose, if you want to make JPEG images to send to people later on Facebook or whatever the hell it is you do, do that in your computer. 
Don't do it in your camera. Your camera, it doesn't matter how expensive it is, it sucks. It wants to take digital negatives and store them. So let it do that in 14-bit, no less. You spent the money for good quality DSLR. Don't shoot JPEGs. If you don't know how to process RAWs yet, so what? Still shoot it in RAW. All you have to do is open them up in Lightroom or something, whatever program you choose, and, you know, save as JPEG. You should be saving them in, like, large format TIFFs, however, not JPEGs. Um, so, you know, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't take any skills with RAW files to, to shoot them in RAW if you don't know how to edit RAW files. And then just click on File, Image, Convert, you know. And they'll choose what you want to save it as. Anybody could do that. If you know how to use a digital camera, you can do that, even if you don't know how to edit RAW files. So, don't be castrating your camera of its potential. I'm going to got this expensive camera on. I'm going to shoot JPEGs in it. Oh, really? Well, why don't you just buy a Barbie camera and cut out the middleman? You know, the Barbie has no option for RAW versus it just shoots JPEGs. Or a point and shoot. Well, that doesn't fit either, because even point and shoots let you give the option between RAW and JPEG. At least most of them do. So, anyway, it's a bit ridiculous. Um, the important thing is, though, um, especially, you know, just forgetting about RAW versus JPEG, the fact that the micro contrast is superior in shooting 14-bit RAW instead of 12-bit, that's significant. It's significant. I've seen a lot of pages where people are trying to talk about, well, I don't see any difference between 14 and 12-bit. Well, I do. They'll post their pictures up. Well, here's a 12-bit, here's a 14-bit. I don't see it. Because you don't know what to look for. You know, it's like asking a wino about what's a good wine. Ah, it's all the same to me. It's all alcohol. Ah. You know, you can't get a fine wine recommendation from a wino. And most people are winos intellectually when it comes to being able to see the difference between 12-bit and 14-bit RAWs. Um, I'm not saying I have some sort of magical vision. I'm just saying I know what the hell to look for. And it's that richness that uh, almost looks like color saturation, but isn't. It's that intertonal value to the picture because the 14-bit is 14-bit and the 12 is 12. There's a reason why that 14-bit file is a lot bigger than the 12. Ah! The files are too big. What well, do you know how much an SD card slot? I mean, how much an SD card costs? I mean, damn, it's a buck a gig now. Yeah, the files are too big. Well, so what? Shut the hell up. Uh, and my hard drive is full. Well, you shouldn't be saving on the hard drive of your computer anyway. You should have multiple redundancies and archives and backups. And hard drives are a dime a dozen. They're cheap. You can get like a three terabyte hard drive now for 99 bucks. Three terabytes. You know how many 14-bit RAW files that'll hold? A lot. A lot. Don't be a lazy schmuck. I'm lazy. I'm lazy, man. I am lazy. I epitomize lazy. You know, if the fat lazy dude uh, covered in tattoos does it, and you, you, you know, there's no way you're a little more lazy than I am. I'm the king of lazy. What's your problem? <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.